the joy I have in sharing these is that I know in some way, somehow, whether you know it or not, good question, I don't know if you know it or not, but I know my God, and I know how He operates in a lot of ways, not every way, because I could already see my baby sister coming at me and saying, no, no, God, don't do that. Well, there are some things that we know by Scripture that God does do, and to her or to anyone that would question what I'm about to say, I'd say, hey, go to Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, you know, and figure out that in another place, in another scripture, God said, my ways are not your ways, neither are your thoughts my thoughts, you know, and God can do anything that he wants to, but the choice is, I know that in some way, God uses these devotions in a very emotional way to bring you and me to a consciousness, an understanding of Him speaking to us. Now, you could say, God, God's not talking to me. That's just written words. Okay, cool. No, that's not God talking to me. That's just you inventing these words. Okay, cool. But you know what? If the words fit your day and the circumstances of your life mesh with what is said, I got a funny feeling that something is operating behind the scenes to make fit the word with the day. Now, you could call it whatever you want. Call it kismet. I don't care. Call it fortuitous circumstances that are placed in the universe to cause this consciousness and the alignment of the planets and the stars and the moon and everything else that comes together and suddenly you're in synchronization with the cosmos out there and it all works together so that it can fit into your world today. Except, I'm reading it and it's God in it and he's speaking to me and you, and if it fits, then do. Because <laughs> the rest of it, it's just baloney. <laughs> it's God who works, and he's working both to do and to will of his good pleasure in your life, and he's trying to share that with you in emotions. So you can pretend like it's religious ideas, or pretend like it's something else that it's not, but what it really is, is God speaking to you. And it doesn't matter who he uses, whether it be me, your own Bible study, your own written word, you're studying the Bible if you have it laid out for you in the morning, or some other devotional. But in evotional, God chose to address your day simply because you're watching and listening in a simple way. In Spurgeon, who's not so simple? <laughs> it says, as God speaks to us, they shall go hindmost with their standards from Numbers. The camp of Dan brought up the rear when the armies of Israel were on the march. The Danites occupied the hindmost or the rearward place. But what mattered the position, since they were as truly a part of the host, were the foremost tribes. They followed the same fiery, cloudy pillar, they ate of the same manna, drank of the same spiritual rock, and journeyed to the same inheritance. Come, my heart, cheer up. Though you may be the last and the least, it is your privilege to be in the army and to fare in the same way as they fared who were leading. Someone must be hindmost or in the rear in honor and esteem, and someone must do menial work for Jesus, and why should not I? Maybe I am of the Danites and in the hindmost and the rearward. In a poor village among an ignorant peasantry or in a black street or a back street among degraded sinners, I will work on and go hindmost with my standard. Who you are, 
with what you are. The Danites occupied a very useful place. Stragglers have to be picked up upon the march. Lost property has to be gathered from the field. Fiery spirits may dash forward over untrodden paths to learn the fresh truth and win more souls to Jesus, but some of a more conservative spirit may be well engaged in reminding the church of her ancient faith and restoring her fainting sons. Every position has its duty, and the slowly moving children of God will find the peculiar state, one in which they may be eminently a blessing to the whole host. The rear guard is a place of danger. There are foes behind us as well as before us. Attacks may come from any quarter. We read that Amalek fell upon Israel and slew some of the hindmost of them. The experienced Christian will find much more work for his weapon in aiding those poor, doubting, desponding, wavering souls who are the hindmost in faith, knowledge, and joy. These must not be left unaided, and therefore be it the business of well-taught saints to bear their standards among the hindmost. My soul, do you tenderly watch to help the hindmost this day? It's easy to be critical. It's easy to tell someone, don't you know that? It's simple to chastise someone or to beat them up for not knowing something they don't know. Those are easy things to do. Those are the normal things that most people do. But, let's say you're a Billy Graham. Can you raise up another Billy Graham better than yourself? Can you raise up another Greg Laurie or Chuck Smith or John Corson better than they? You see, Paul did that. He was able to inspire and he worked hard to cause others to be greater than he was when he said he was the chiefest of sinners. And that is our destination in causing the preparation of a person's soul to be made ready so that God could take them and form them and fashion them greater than you are. Because Jesus esteemed himself a servant to serve others that he could lift them up to God, which is what we are called to do. Not to stand in front, like a pastor says, you know, oh, well, you know, I want to lift you guys up to God, but by the way, I'm up front. No, that's not what he's talking about. God wants you to be that person who could be, maybe you know the answer, but you could inspire someone else to find it for themselves. That's the lesson of a true teacher. That's what a pastor, if he's a shepherd, would do to cause the sheep to be fed, filled, and then go out and become shepherds themselves. It's easy to make sheep. You just let sheep be sheep and they're going to propagate. But to turn a sheep into a shepherd, that's a trick. That's what God wants. It's easy to be sheep. It's a little harder to be a shepherd. And you know what? The shepherd isn't the one that's in the front. The shepherd is the one that the Holy Spirit fills and allows him, the Holy Spirit, to speak through to minister to the people. We tend to look at who's in the front rather than who's in the rear. I think you'll find Jesus walking not in front so often, but sometimes behind to just make sure he doesn't lose one. The fact of the story is that God cares about every single person, whether front, back, middle, or crawling on hands and knees.